Hi guys, welcome back to the non immigrant Student Podcast. So, um, if you if you're new here, welcome. But if you're not, this is part two of the episode titled "Landing a Job." I'm McKinsey and Google with Grace and yeah. I. <laughs> so, in part one, we talked all that we shared, like how we met, you know, at her journey, you know, from Rwanda to the US. I also shared like bits of my story to where I was in Nigeria, what I did in Nigeria before I came to Cornell. You know, we just just said about any and everything. And now in part two, now we're going to be discussing the road to McKinsey and the road to Google. Amen. amen. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. We are, we are, we're pretty much pumped. And like we said in part one, this is a very reflective episode. Um, I was very nervous recording this because I still can't believe, you know, I have this job. And I think um, Grace can say the same. Um, and just so not to take any much more of your time. Um, so we're going to get right into it. <laughs> We call, um, so just in part one, we're talking about Cornell funding, how we got our funding yeah. for, uh, we had 37,000 off um, about, 35. yeah, 30, oh, yeah, sorry. We had 35,000 <laughs> off our tuition of yes. about, it was, our tuition so was about tuition 32K or 32, how much was our tuition, tuition for again? For a semester for a year. For a semester. For a semester, it was, so for the year, it's like 37, 30, 36. For tuition? No, 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 no sorry, 63. Three, 63. exactly. Okay. Um, and, so we had, and we had 35k of that <clears throat> and then the, our third so my third semester i had a, my full tuition wave so all i was paying was rent basically yeah for me too, <laughs> yeah, yeah i was doing two semesters, semesters. i had my last semester sorry wave. so yeah we just finished talking about that um so if you're interested in coming to corona and african student definitely explore that the iad website the person to look for is miss jackie yeah. It's, it's, it's Jesus. The surprising thing is hey. that I never got in touch with her. I think oh. it's you who knows her more than yeah. I do. For me, I hope I'm getting her name. I think it's Miss Jackie. Yeah. And yeah. Tanya, shout out to Tanya. Shout out to Tanya. Our shout guardian to angel. Me. Honestly, like, always being, like, she always came through. Anyway, so yes, if you're black um, and you're female, you know, and all of that, this, like, there are diverse scholarships that cover you. Ask for it, you know. I, I mean, it, it might not occur, like, it might not be available at all schools, but there's a possibility it is. Yeah. So now going into our um, job search, mm. Mm. for mm. me, I don't think, <laughs> mm. oh God, I'm one of those people that judge me on LinkedIn that come to say I'm pleased to announce. I'm excited to share. I'm happy to announce. Anyway, I mean, we saw all those posts while applying and I would say a lot of them were inspiring anyway, but, but I and Grace, since we got our offers, we have not been so excited to share yet. <laughs> Yeah. Or maybe we have, but we haven't shared. We have been excited just between us. <laughs> so, so, exactly. And now we're sharing on podcast. So, by the way, um, this episode would probably drop after we start working. I start work May 31st of 2022 and Grace starts July 8th, July 8th of 2022. Um, so, you, you should be hearing this then. Um, so, now we're going to talk about the roads that have led us to these big companies yeah. in corporate America. Hey. Yes, hey. girl, look hey. at hey. us. Look at, hey. us now. Look at God. <laughs> And talk about, you know, so I think this episode is going to be very deep. <laughs> this, yeah. Sorry, this part is going to be quite deep. It's sorry because I feel a lot of times, and this is not even imposter syndrome now. Like, I don't, I, okay, I won't say I don't believe in imposter syndrome. That's quite ignorant of me. But personally, people who know me probably know this, um, my friends. I do think highly of myself. I do, very, I do think highly of my race, of my, you know, everything that God has used to create me. I do think highly of it. I, I don't think it, it is superiority complex or anything. But I think in trying to have that radical belief in yourself, it really helps propel you into the destiny you're meant for. Yes. Like, and that is why, I mean, a lot of people, contrary to popular opinion, people like yeah. Trump, Kanye West, you know, people who, I mean, I know people might argue they are narcissists. I don't care. But you see the way they believe in themselves. They believe in their talent. They believe in what they can bring to this world, their creativity. They, they believe in everything they are called to do basically and you see that these people attain high levels of success mm -hmm. and that is that is also the kind of life i choose to live i and grace say that i she 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 says that i got into her dream job and i say she got in i i usually say to that she got into my dream job for most of you who are in nigeria you know that working at mckinsey is a big deal shout out to miss kemi anabanjo yourself like a lot of us who know her know her in nigeria um she has, she's such an epitome of success as a female and as an eagle people who finish from Kwa university and i remember then it was such a big deal to want to work at mckinsey it was a dream like sometimes you just it was like a fantasy, a daydream. Not that you really thought you could do it. And I've been applying 
applying timelessly. I even applied for the NYC program. And then Grace gets the job and she's like, Tolu, I'm not sure, you know. <laughs> you know, I- I'll let you share that story <laughs> of how. So now, oh God, okay, I feel like. Okay, so this episode is for two of us. So let me backtrack a bit. Um, let me backtrack a bit. First of all, you had a stint at Bloomberg. I don't think we talked about this. Ooh, you worked yes. at Bloomberg before you came to Cornell. Yes. Uh, um, do you want to share that experience, what you worked us and all that? Absolutely. Are we not in the same space? <laughs> anyway. yeah, absolutely. Um, so for those who don't know, so when I graduated in undergrad, I graduated in um, spring 2020. Mm-hmm. And then that was, you know, pandemic was hot. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, honestly, I'm not sure if I am ready for school, but I had gotten my admission for Cornell. So mm-hmm. I deferred my application to study in 2021 so when i graduated i didn't got no job <laughs> and i was like where am i going to work and then god gave me a job that june mm-hmm. so i started in that july i mm-hmm. worked for a year mm-hmm. leading to that year it was also a whole testimony because mm-hmm. i kept asking the lord do you want me to go to school do you want me to keep working he led me to go to school so mm-hmm. guys i had to quit my job mm-hmm. it was like where's this bread gonna be coming, coming from <laughs> she said bread <laughs> Yeah, so... Doesn't he provide our daily bread? Hey, doesn't he provide that? Hey, Hey. our diary. So I quit my job to start school, and Mm -hmm. I am very glad that I did. Mm -hmm. So that's the... uh, I had one year work experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what was your role at Bloomberg? At at Bloomberg, I was an enterprise data technical support representative. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wait, can you say that? Many of my friends. Yeah. Uh Yeah. And how did you get that job? So how how many jobs had you applied for after undergrad up until you got Bloomberg? Oh, my God. I applied to so many. Mm -hmm. I applied to so many. Um, But I remember before getting into Bloomberg, I had another offer in another company that I really also liked. And then I was, you know, everything we we have to really seek the Lord. And Mm -hmm. I'm not, we're not here blaming people who don't seek God. (laughs) We are saying that for us, we just seek Him for guidance. It is what we're used to. Yes. Mm -hmm. I had to ask the Lord, do you want me to go to Bloomberg or this other company? Do you want to share the name of the other company? Yeah, absolutely. It's called Fast Enterprises. And Mm -hmm. it was really nice. I loved the people there. Um, Yeah, so the Lord led me to to Bloomberg. And Mm -hmm. that's that's how I... And what does Bloomberg do, by the way? Just for people who say... So for Bloomberg, for people who don't... A lot of people actually know Bloomberg for the Bloomberg News. News, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but it's a whole fintech company. So Mm -hmm. they provide access to financial data, Mm real-time or not Mm -hmm. real-time. So they do a lot of... of, um, data storage, different products that they offer. So it's pretty cool. And you were an enterprise? Um, enterprise data tech um, oh. support rep. So right. I was mm-hmm. doing a lot of things with mm-hmm. uh, troubleshooting and mm-hmm. assisting clients to get um, access to, to data. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that's what I did before coming to Cornell. Yeah. And then after, so during our program, I think Cornell, um, our engineering management program, we had the core class of professional development, if you remember. Yes. And I actually did enjoy that class, even mm-hmm. though it was a class that had the most unnecessary assignments. Like, remember, um, Professor Newman asked us to write 15 PARs. Like, and PARs stand for problems, action, results, and yeah, yeah problem, action, did you result. Say one five? 15 like it was 30 for for, us, in my time it was 15 and i remember like i think i only had seven so he would ask you to create scenarios like because these are things you get asked during your interviews and all that yes. like create a problem or a team member was being difficult what action did i take what result did you bring about you know yeah. and we'll submit it he would i remember another assignment i had was to ask two people to give me linkedin recommendations you know and you would submit what they wrote you know it was a i think it was a one unit class or so yeah. but there's i feel like the assignment so that was that to me that was the biggest form of career development prep we had and i remember before we got into cornell i think we had a resume review with yeah. our advisors yeah. i had with him and i remember he saw I that i have one with, with my mm-hmm. oh Pretend and they put us in a team i had one with tanya Oh, so, yeah, I see. Program coordinator. NATO. So mine was with Professor Newman. And I remember that on that on my resume, I had put that I helped our com- my company back then save fifteen thousand dollars because I was tr- I was tracking equipment procurement costs. I worked in hey. operation. It's nothing. Don't worry. <laughs> I worked in operations and facilities, and um, they were trying to change the lofting cylinder of the crane yada, 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 that we use offshore. And I think, um, okay, let me know, Miss Yan. But anyway, a lot of it, so things happened, and I double checked a lot of numbers, and I saw that some of these numbers were repeated, you know, as per regular supply chain and logistics issues for those of you who have an experience of what is like to work in the oil and gas industry. Mm-hmm. And so to me, I calculated everything. I felt like because of what I had done, the tracking I had done, I saved the company $15,000 in operating expenditure. 
So he saw it on my resume and was like, is this 15,000 Nigerian dollars or 15,000 US dollars? I'm not really going to say what was on my mind because this is public episode and he could probably be listening to it. But I was like, wow, did they just insult me and I didn't know? You know, I, I just thought it was very rude for them to say that. First of all, we don't use dollars in Nigeria. <laughs> but anyway, I think he was just double checking that, you know, what was on my... Because the takeaway point from that was like, he was trying to tell me, don't put what you don't mean on your resume or don't put what is not true. And I'm like, yes, I know that. I, I will not um, cook up numbers. But anyway, I'm saying that to say that there was a lot of... Cornell, I wouldn't say our program really prepared us career-wise. They tried to. I mean, there was also the Career Engineering Center, which was good. But during the pandemic, I did not have a lot of access to that. Mm -hmm. So most of the job advice I got was from people I knew. So who when I saw exactly, roles. or who were already in roles, exactly, a lot of Nigerians who came here and were doing well for themselves. You know, <laughs> These were people I had to look up to. Like, oh my God, look at my friend. They are Google, they are Microsoft, they are this, they are that. You know, Those were the kind of people that inspired me. And then I did have a lot of friends in the business school. So I saw how those people were preparing, setting up themselves for success and all that. So I knew that I needed to get a job. So although somehow going back to my home country was an option, just a tiny little bit of an option. But time and again, I would have people send me pictures of them holding my shirt saying, don't come back to, don't come back to the country. There's nothing in Nigeria. Yada, yada, yada. Because, you know, there were a lot of graduates, schools trying out graduates and no jobs for them. But now that I reflect back on my journey up until getting this job, I would say that um, Cornell did their best. I mean, all the resume reviews, all the talking with my classmates, all the classes I took, you know, that taught me how to become a better professional, a better um, leader. I would say everything has brought me here. For you, what would you say your job journey has been like? So during grad school, would you say Cornell offered you a lot of support? What challenges did you face and how did you overcome that? Um, I think for me, my story will definitely be different because for me, <clears throat> I had a really good experience in my undergrad mm. with our shout out to him he was then the director executive director of the career services in my mm. undergrad mm -hmm. and i'm telling you he really came through for me he was mm -hmm. reviewing every single one of those mm -hmm. resumes cover letters mm -hmm. anything i had to send so i had a really close relationship with him he was really like a mentor mm -hmm. so he helped me a lot so when i came to cornell mm -hmm. I didn't really get to see that, but mm -hmm. I was yeah. working at yeah. the engineering career. Yes, yeah. so you were, what was your role again? I was a graduate student. <laughs> yes, and I was, I was your customer, as we were saying, yeah, Nigeria. <laughs> yes, I used to go to Grace for, you know, then, I think it was, that was false, sorry, that was, so by then, that was my third semester when Grace took up this role as a yeah. career. Was it? Was it tight? Uh, yeah, you were a graduate peer advisor. So we're supposed to come to you and be like, this is my resume. I have this interview. Please, let's prepare together. We had a couple of behavioral interview yes. sessions. Yes. I remember I would come late, you know. <laughs> Gosh, God would deliver me. I would come late and Grace, in her, in her usual nature of not knowing how to be angry, I would not be begging her. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know it's not like I was taking our friendship for granted. But anyway... <laughs> But yes, you would prep me and all that. And then I had no job in view, you know. I was just like, oh, if my friend is doing this, let me also, so, even aside supporting you, I was also helping yes. myself. You know, I yes. wanted to be able to practice, to be able to get ready. I mean, if this resource is available. And I remember going to the group chat, tell everybody, yes. Grace is a peer advisor. You guys, go and do this. So go and this <laughs> was like shouting out for me everywhere. I'm telling yeah. you. And, and really, I thought it was just a useful resource that, wow, this exists. And you guys will send us templates and, you know, Whatever. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so for me, because the more I did it, mm -hmm. the more it was helping me as well. Yeah. So anytime I had like students come in seeking for advice, mm -hmm. I had to learn mm -hmm. what I have to tell them so that and you were trained. when I'm doing it, mm -hmm. I know that I'm applying the same knowledge to my resume. Yeah. So I got to really take time to work on my resume mm -hmm. to make it... I'm not going to use the word perfect, yeah. but to make it so that when I'm giving advice to the mm. others, I won't feel guilty that you're telling people something you are not applying Apply. yourself. Mm. So, and I, I, you know how much I loved my job. Yeah. I really <laughs> loved getting to help students practice for interviews, mm -hmm. cover letters and resumes, because I'm so um, passionate about professional development. Mm -hmm. so, yes, and you were for, for our department yes, graduate yes. club so you're also the, the professional development chair <laughs> i was i was yeah. yes it's something that i really i love to see people tapping wait let me let me add this fun fact so for that club i ran for president <laughs> even though that i felt <laughs> see <laughs> what am i laughing do you know another fun fact um 
during my undergrad, I also did run for president. At first, it was mostly motivated by the fact that I didn't like who was running. So, um, ah, this this is TMI. Okay, let me just say it anyway. This is about our whole story. Um, backtrack. I was treasurer in my second year for the Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers, um, Community University Student Chapter. And then when I was going to three hundred level, which is considered the higher level, um, I was going to run for financial secretary. So that's like a higher position. Um, I was also treasurer even during my NYSC, whatever, whatever. So anyway, when it was time, when I saw the people that, that nobody was going to run for president, I was like, no, or that no, no, no. And I feel like I can do it. You know, I could, I enjoyed planning and, you know, whatever needed to be done, shall yeah. I, I could, shall do it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to run. And at the time, shout out to number one. He was my opening then. Um, a lot of things, okay, this, I would say the story is not relevant to this episode, so I won't get into it. But anyway, I lost by six votes. I did a whole campaign and all of that. And I was like, yes, I'll be the first female president, you know, mm-hmm. of our association then. Hey. <laughs> I did lose by six votes. And I remember I had guys who came to tell me that told you, you, you be our guy. This, let me speak for you, you be our guy, but we cannot vote for you. We have to vote for the other guy because he's our guy. Him too is our guy. You know, you know so feminists will say that that is so... That was the word now, misogynistic, you know, like, why would you, why would you choose a man over a woman just because he's your guy, even though he might not be having qualified, but whatever. Yeah. And then when I came here again, I was like, I can't, this, after I'm the club, I was like, oh, I can run for it. It's just to organize events. I'll be, I'll also be the first, short, I won't be the first black person hey. in this president role, you know, I was just always trying to make history. <laughs> But I lost, and it was just for fun anyway. And now Grace, Grace also ran, and she became professional development chair. So that's just a segue. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And so, so mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that I really got a lot of training. Um, yeah. So, because from what I know, in uh, from people in our program, some of them, like many of them, actually had to find their own resources on their own. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel yeah. like that is something that. Everybody they can do can better, do better. Or, yeah. Everybody. No, call them out. That is something we feel the engineering management department <laughs> can do better. Actually, not only that, but the whole yeah. engineering school. Um, yeah. And they're so focused on grades, school, like passing. Like, I feel like they should be more. Well, I think that's why the Engineering Career Development Center is, exists. Yes. Like, I really like that this initiative. Yeah, so like, the yeah. thing is, uh, a lot of students actually don't know that resource, yeah. which, is, which, which to me, I find very sad. Yeah. Because if you know about that, you know when you came, you were yeah. like, I don't know why I never came here, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's like a... So that's why, for me, speaking for my mm-hmm. um, my experience is different from the others because as I trained people, I was training myself. Myself, yeah. yeah. And that was good. So tell us how you got this McKinsey job. I'll go into Girl, my story. You know my story. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell uh, yeah, your, tell your us. audience. Yeah. Let me tell you. We're being real Where do you here. start from? <laughs> I applied to, I, I think. You know, wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Sorry to cut you. Let's backtrack. Remember? When earlier this semester you came and you told me that you were talking to God about why were you not getting interviews that you had been applying. Let's start from there. Let's start from there. Yeah, let's start from there. Okay. Our God is good. Yeah. Uh, Let me start from there. So Tolo and I know that however much we want to put effort in anything, Mm -hmm. we still have God who has to confirm if something is is a go or no go. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember... Because I always value excellence and I have always believed that God's favor is on me because everything mm-hmm. that I really put my hands on really succeeds. Mm-hmm. Even if it doesn't succeed, but it, it has a way, at least it has a movement. Mm. I was applying and applying and applying. 30 jobs, 40 jobs, mm. 50 jobs. We even created, came. remember you created an Excel sheet. I created an I Excel sent to me. me. I already sworn that I'm not going to follow anybody on the Excel sheet. That when I get a job, I will not give speech of it. I applied 3,500 jobs. I said, go for it. That's not my portion. <laughs> but anyway, no, <laughs> let's I, continue. Actually, when I did that, that job tracker, it was mm-hmm, for yeah. me to remember that if a job calls me, I have a link to read the job description. So yeah. I have it. Yeah. So I'm not going to be rambling, but yo, I'll tell you, mm-hmm. at so so many jobs nobody calling me that's mm. when i got to know this is not the norm because mm. i was like i think as mm. you said we think highly of ourselves so, yeah <laughs> brag or anything i, was I like, were bragging please hey. i've told you that this year no more false humility i beg please we are bragging in the lord <laughs> both said, in the lord no, we please that the is lord. the word of god because i, have, I really <laughs> believed that mm-hmm. i was all up for excellence and god's mm-hmm. favor was on me when mm-hmm. i was not receiving any interviews or anything i was like god something something is wrong mm-hmm. so i started praying about it i was like this has never happened to me mm-hmm. usually if i'm applying you know like grad school every grad mm-hmm. school that 4.1 12 me, schools hey 
Yeah, so when I, when I sought the Lord, I, he, I remember when I woke up mm. and I was very down. Mm. Like I was so, like I was so, so down. And I, I, I dreamt about um, like the Holy Spirit speaking to me that your season of interviews is coming. Mm. Huh. Hmm. I was like, this it is worked. a word. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Then I really took it to heart I, yeah. and I wrote it down. <clears throat> I was like, you know, when you heard something, I was yeah. like, I know I heard something. You, you, know, you said you went to the shower anything. and then oh, you and ran then, out. And then, I, and then I went to the shower <laughs> and then the Holy Spirit said, the job I'll give you will surprise you. But hey. he said it in Kinyaranda. He mm. said, mm. you know, hey, mm. I ran out of the shower. I was yeah. like, this is another word. I'm going to write it down before yeah. I forget yeah. that I came yeah. back to finish and, and put, put water on me because mm. I was like, there's mm. no way I'm going to forget this yeah. verse. Two days after I believe, I started having interview after interview. I'm not mm. going to say that I got in all of those interviews, mm. but I, at least it's movement. Yeah. You can see that things are, are starting to roll. Amen. Mm-hmm. I kept applying. I kept... <laughs> <laughs> look at so you now. Was, hey, look at us <laughs> now. Oh, you need this one, yes. Yeah. Oh, my and God. Then later, uh, a, job, a job gave me an offer, and then another job gave me an offer. Mm-hmm. And then Tolu was like, hmm, so Grace, see how, like, offer is coming. Like, I know. Boom. And me, I don't think I had an offer there. <laughs> no, you don't have an offer. I don't even know I'm such a jokester. <laughs> you you, you tell us your story as well. Oh, and, my God. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, I really wanted another, another like, role. Do you mind sharing the companies you, like, you got the offers from? The companies that I applied to? Mm. Yeah, you can share. Yeah, and once mm-hmm. if you want to. Yeah, I applied to Bank of America. I applied to Microsoft. Mm-hmm. I applied to Facebook. Mm-hmm. I applied to so many companies. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, those that gave me an an offer, one is called Invesco, and another one is called um, Intact Technologies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so those are the ones that gave me an offer. And then later. I don't even and those were five figure see. jobs, right? I don't even know how do you to want to share their salaries as well? No. I wouldn't be able to oh. disclose that. Ah, sorry. No, okay. it's okay. No, yeah, right. Actually, yes, no, no, yes. No, no, I think no, those no. things are confidential. Yeah, I wanted to share are, that in case all, um, people want to have a, like a better context of the jobs and the roles we are applying to. Yeah, That's just the, yeah. no, they can they can always reach out. L- yeah, because oh, okay. the, these things, you know. I value confidentiality a lot, so As we I, should. I, I won't be able to disclose that. <laughs> okay. I know it totally understands. Of course I and, do. <laughs> um, so when when I, the, how I applied to Mackenzie, to be honest, I never ever thought about Mackenzie. Mm. Like, I got to know about Mackenzie when I got that Cornell. Everybody was <laughs> singing about Mackenzie, not even talking about yeah, Did you even take singing. the popular consulting class here, Randy Allen? Did you take no. the class? <laughs> All of us are not took the class. <laughs> So you think I took any consulting why, class? Why? No. I, you know, I think that's what God loves to do. To I never continually confound the wise with the knew, foolish. I never, I never yeah. even dreamt. <laughs> and then later to do that's when she was like, Grace, I don't think that you understand <laughs> how, how prestigious McKinsey yeah. is. And People who are going to go into consulting, that's where they want to go. I mean, the MBB, to right? Be, to be honest, yeah. I never, I got, I got to know it up here. Mm. In, in, I came here at 26 and I got to McKinsey 22. 22. <laughs> And let's talk about how I so you remember the week you were interviewing for McKinsey, you were mm-hmm. at my place. That was our birthday weekend. That if you remember, our birthday weekend. <laughs> so when McKinsey yeah. reached out, shout out to them, honestly, they were yeah. very, very, yeah, they kind. have a very good like they recruitment were very process. Kind, yeah, because I told them that I had another offer, mm-hmm. another competing offer that I really needed things to be to be to be sped up, sped yeah, expedited. Up, mm-hmm. Expedited, they came through. I did interview, all of my interviews were in one week, mm-hmm. but. Um, I was. It was in our birthday weekend, mm. and I'm telling you, interview after interview, mm. I was like, I'm just gonna go in, <laughs> see how it goes, because of course I prepared. Yeah. But at the same time, I think the way I prepare is not how it came out. <laughs> you know, when to look at me, she was like, I don't understand how this girl. Like, I don't. She was like, Grace, I don't think that you remember that you are applying to McKinsey. <laughs> I kept reminding like, her. But don't you have an me. interview? She was that... like, don't you have an interview? Because you would sit and watch movies until 2 a.m. and mm. I have an interview. Ten. The uh-huh. next morning, and I was like, "Yeah," because yeah, I really believe that God's favor was on me when mm. when it started. Even the interview process, I saw that it was something that I never expected. Yeah. I was like, "With the kissing and all that." Yeah, 
and and it was it was tough but i was i received favor from mm. the lord and i went through it mm-hmm. and i came out strong i remember yeah. when i got my offer yeah and, uh, where were we my verbal offer we were at home oh yeah where your yeah, house. Was at my house yeah it was and, and my friends were around shout out to pearl and busi and, and then onika. yeah and onika yes yeah. yes and yeah we and then we um her recruiter called her and we found out do you remember the day that would have been april what seven yeah, so that so that was that that was that um Saturday of our birthday weekend. I'm so not yeah, that's our birthday was on Tuesday. Was, it I, should I be that was the Saturday the ninth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, uh, and Paul got me. us dinner. Yeah. Then when I when I got outside, I was like, "Girl, we <laughs> got the job!" <laughs> <laughs> oh God. And really, yeah. they were my 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 support system mm-hmm. through it all. Even yeah. carrying my laptop, they were like, yeah. "Grace, you have." <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I remember we all had to leave the room for you to take take your calls and everything happened within one week you know yeah. and you already had two offers in hand you know when you were trying to see if you would get McKinsey yeah, and, and eventually I want to take this this opportunity also to tell people if if you see a role and you are intimidated by it please be intimidated after you apply am am to that girl yeah, just apply. <laughs> apply yes if you don't if you don't meet all of the requirements no trust me nobody meets at least 50% because, because yeah. if you meet all the requirements you don't you need something else mm. like you need another job you won't <laughs> be able to grow yeah but if you meet 70% 65% percent mm-hmm. yeah. hey, apply go ahead and apply exactly. be nervous after you <laughs> finish all of your like they say the job description is a wish list for the employer it's just a wish list no, like honestly go yeah. for it yeah. Go for it. Yeah, and of course I continued to 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 interview, and then I I took. There are some other weeks also. I I'm aware that sometimes graduate students can interview, 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 and mm. then just have like a burnout. Mm. Please listen to your body. Mm. If you feel like you need a week off of applying, take a week off. I remember mm. there are some days that I was so exhausted. Mm. I was like, you know what? This week I'm not applying to anything. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. And I then after know. you get a job, that's when every other company studies. So, I know. Definitely. Can we have a? Can we have a? Can we? What's that thing they always say? Can we book some time to chat? No, no, we cannot <laughs> chat. When I needed to chat with you, where were you? Don't chat with me. <laughs> oh my God! But anyway, yeah, that's my journey. Journey, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Look, and look at you now, yeah. girl. <laughs> and then yeah, tell so us. So, so, what role did you get into? What location and all yes, that? Yes, I am going to be doing solutions delivery analyst which mm-hmm. i'm very excited for and no honestly i also want to take this time to shout out to tolu mm. yeah she was not <laughs> expecting this <but laughs> I really thank her that she was my support like many times i really wanted to give up mm-hmm. i was like you know what that's it mm-hmm. i'm going to settle for this one and she was like no grace i keep going mm-hmm. and god continued to speak to me about not compromising mm-hmm. that something better is coming mm-hmm. so she really encouraged me she helped prep me with interviews mm. and if you are that person who can give feedback mm-hmm. please help someone mm-hmm. you don't know the job they're going to get you don't you don't know when in the future you mm-hmm. will exchange change <laughs> Grace, Grace really wants us to exchange these jobs, God. Anyway, I remember that even for the Google job that we I was also applying to, I also sent you the link that you should yes. apply as an entry level role. Do you want to share that yes, story? Yes. Yeah. So Tolu was applying to Google, and she sent um a, a link for me to apply. She was like, cause she she doesn't really keep the information to herself, and mm-hmm. it's something that I value a lot about her mm-hmm. so she was like grace this is something that i'm applying for please apply you know so many people we're not gonna name <laughs> names but when they're applying they will not even tell you where they're applying like for me i'm like sis i really have a job, job. <laughs> i'm not trying to take your job but she shared her her role that She's she was going to give for. up and then unfortunately it didn't work out for me mm-hmm. but i was that came after i have yeah. received my offer yeah. which i'm very thankful for so yeah Yeah, so I thank her so much. Ah, <sighs> yeah, that's. Yeah. And you wait, wait, wait. Before we go into my own, I know I'm, I'm stalling, but anyway, yeah. do you also want to share that last interview you had at McKinsey <laughs> that really threw you, that the interview that was supposed to throw you off, but you held your cool? Do you also no. want to share that? You know, you know, uh, really, I have so much respect for people at McKinsey because they really know what they're doing. Yeah. And I, I believe it's in every company when you are talking to interviewers they know what they're doing. So my last interview was tough. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. You know when you give like an answer and then some someone is like, mm, think about something else that's yeah. not good enough." Hey. 
how can someone tell you you're already under pressure? I was like, I was like, but every time I'm going to enter in an interview, I'm always like, God, cover me with your favor. Because mm. I believe favor, we always talk about it. Favor yeah. will open doors that you won't have to touch. Mm. Hey! Doors. <laughs> we just automatic doors you don't need to touch. And I so I thank the Lord that that interview was so hard for mm. me. Mm. Um, it was pretty much just quizzing me on my technical experience mm-hmm. and my knowledge about technology. Yeah, remember and there was no question you said they asked you like, what technology has not been invented. Yeah, yet? like what technology has not even been invented? I was like, God, you are the, you are the God of the future. <laughs> future now give me this <laughs> it, was, it was what i was asking i'm on this spot man but, yeah but i really thank god so if you are if you have an interview coming or if you're planning to do interviews please don't be afraid it you know Tolu, there are people like us mm. behind the camera behind the computer it's mm. just like you and me mm-hmm, it's, yeah. it's anybody so have a conversation treated as a conversation if you want to smile smile if you want to you know yeah don't be nervous you got this Hmm. So, yeah, that's my experience. experience. So, everything is really credited to the Almighty. I thank God so much. Hmm. No other God. Mm. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Laura, for me, where do I, where do I even begin to start? Where do I start? Did you start last semester. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, where do I even start? You know, I've been here now three semesters. And sometimes I always tell myself I don't think I took this job such seriously. Because for a long time, and I think I shared this in my Thanksgiving special episode. Mm. I think that episode I was really vulnerable about how I was so unsure about a lot of things. So try, after I started it, I hope we don't have part three of this episode. I'll try to share it succinctly. So when, um, during my thanks, during Thanksgiving around that time, uh, that was the first time I tried to see a therapist. Like my, my spring semester was really bad, like after coming here. And it wasn't because I was um, looking for jobs and I didn't find I think school was just tough. It was lonely. I was like, why do I keep fighting for grades? You know, why, why, you know, why is everything just such a rat race? And all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I'm no longer interested in this engineering. I think since I love to podcast, since I love to write, since I think I'm interested in media and marketing, mm-hmm. let me begin to look for jobs there. You know, mistaking the fact that this was just a passion or a hobby or probably even a calling. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to make a job out of it. But anyway, I remember I started applying to CNN. All my networking even took me to. So I had a friend who I went to see in D.C. For most of you remember when I traveled to DMV um, last summer. My friend had a roommate that had someone who was working for Joe Biden. Like she was behind the cameras in the White House. So like she followed Joe Biden everywhere. My networking took me up until that point that I even started to have conversations with people. Most of you might not know this. I don't think a lot of people know. I even called my international office. That I think I want to do a second master's in journalism. I had started talking to people who were at Columbia Journalism, schools in California that did media. I was ready to quit. Like, I was almost quitting school. I remember a day that I spoke to my mom. I think one of those mornings, one of those depressing mornings of decision analytics and framing. I hated that class so much. Oh, my God. I hated all my core classes because I'm like, I do not have to do this in life to succeed. I'm one of those people who's, who believed that I don't have to be in tech to make money, right? I don't have to be coding to make money. I was one, I'm definitely, I was definitely one of those people. And my mom was asking me, why are you, what's the problem? Why is your voice? My mom was saying, you sound sad. I can feel that your spirit is down, whatever. And now to my mom that I feel like giving up. You know, of course I know I can't give up. I mean, the true Nigerian and African in us, you really still have to finish school. But I was, I was really done. And yeah. then she was like, okay, what do you want to do? I mean, I really didn't know how to tell her I want to go into media. I want to be on the news. I remember the day I even told one of my aunties that I want to be on the news. I think I want to be speaking. I just want to be talking. She said, talking. That, what do you mean? You know how Nigerians react? It was so funny. <laughs> how did I think about it? It was so funny. But I was really trying to leave engineering into media. And whatever, whatever, I applied to all those companies. And of course, it didn't work out. Networked, did a lot of information, interviews. So it did, it now started to look like I was not even applying. Meanwhile, I was just trying to break into a new, a new industry. Field. Exactly, a new field. I'd already started, I was really, in short, I, I think maybe this is even the main testimony in my story. Because for the longest time, forget that I was applying to Amazon, Google, Facebook. Even all those roles I was applying for, I used to tell my sister then. Because I remember I, I used to talk to my younger sister who had come back to Nigeria, that Timmy, I'm really, shout out to you, Timmy, by the way. I'm really considering coming back to Nigeria. Like, look at you, you did well. Um, you did, you're doing well for yourself. You have a job, you've been promoted. Look at you, you're even going for international trips. I am, you know, I was like, maybe I should come back to Nigeria and be thinking, I'm possibly going and get a job in that KPMG I was eyeing before. 
because it was getting really um i was like i'm not really sure what i want to do i remember i went to cornell university school of performing arts to go and see one of the professors there because i used to work as a classroom assistant for a media class where they used to teach film photography so i was so excited i would be in the class i'm like wow i mean students just buy cameras and go and take pictures and that's a class that why didn't i ever do this and i started wishing i really did mass communication for my undergrad whatever so i saw a professor and i talked to him and i told him um Professor, this is what I, th- I think I'm interested in going to journalism, but I don't know how to break in. And then he sent me this link. I applied to United Talent Agency. Like, I was really trying to move to Hollywood. You know, try- I was really trying to make a job out of my passion. Mm-hmm. But anyway, after talking to him, he also told me that. I remember I started crying because I had really broken down. Like, I had I'd exhausted all my options that to the point I started crying in front of the wrong person because the guy was indeed willing to talk to me. And he told me that maybe... Maybe I shouldn't give up on my engineering dreams. I was like, sir, it's not a dream. It's just that I, you know, but anyway. <laughs> but he was like, try those things first. If they don't work out, then come into this industry, but try. Mm-hmm. So that this all this happened around Thanksgiving 2021. Then I went to see family in Boston and I was able to recuperate, you know. I became kind of myself again after I came back from Thanksgiving, looking forward to graduating in December. So by the way, I completed all my coursework in December of last year. But none of those things worked out either way. All those jobs, all these Excel sheets, job trackers, I think I should have applied to at least 60 jobs in total. Or let me, let me just say 100 to round up everything. But I don't think I had like a very wondrous journey like a lot of people that say I applied to 3,500 jobs. I want to thank this person, thank this person, thank for... No, no, no. I don't think mine was like that. For a lot of time, mine was a lot of indecision and confusion as to what I was going into. Then 2022 came. Hey. <laughs> And then I was like those that the Lord, what's that scripture? The Lord turned against the captivity of Zion. Let me not go and misquote. <laughs> but I was like a man that dreamed. Yeah. And then January came, 2222 came. And on the 31st of December, also I said this in my episode that in 2021, um, I think I did that whole year without God, basically. I think that year I was far away from God. I did it a lot by myself. Sometimes I would forget that I can pray and ask for help. So this episode, I, I, I hope that, I think a lot of you who follow me are Christians and we share the same faith. And even for those that don't, you still understand what, what it means to trust in something, you know, to have faith that something can come to pass. And I think a lot of times went when I did it alone. And that showed because... You know, I would forget to ask God for help. You know, I, I would forget that he's my strength in my weakness, you know, and all of that. But in 2020, so I decided that I was going to take a different route. Even though, yes, I know God didn't judge me by the fact that I wasn't reading my Bible, I wasn't devoted, I wasn't studious or anything. He still took care of me. But I was like, 2022, I want to be more committed to this work with God. I want to be more stable. So I remember on the 31st, like a lot of people do New Year's Eve, I decided to fast. Even that day, I went for a basketball game. But I made sure not to eat. And I, I was just like, God, I, I, this is never me doing a religious way. I just want to show you that I want to start the new year well. I want to be, I want my spirit to be in tune with whatever it is you have to say yeah. for the next year. And I spoke to a friend. She might not know this, but I haven't even told her yet. Shout out to you, Kewa Kofura. She told me, um, she had, we had connected after a long while. She was like, by the way, what are you doing now? You know the question we all dread. What next? <laughs> you yeah. know? And of course, it was an innocent question. I know people who ask me well. And I was like, hmm. I'm currently looking for jobs. I finished in December. I, I, I recently completed my program, 18th of December, 2021. She told me, hmm, rest easy. God has already prepared a place for you. Hey. That was a word. That's a word. And to, you know, on another day where maybe I was not fasting, I might not have picked it, but my spirit really picked that. And to her, she was probably just giving me casual advice like everybody would tell you. Don't, I, and me personally, I hate when people tell me, don't worry, you'll be fine. I don't know why I hate it. I feel like it's such a lazy, inspirational quote. <laughs> No offense to people that say it. I will say, I catch myself saying it sometimes, but I just personally, I'm not really a fan. But when she told me that God has already prayed the priest of you, I'm like, hmm, okay, it's CNN, it's in Hollywood, it's in Atlanta, you know? I was already trying to calculate where it is God was taking me. But anyway, I held that word, kind of. So every time I would feel a certain way, I would remember that. And that's what led me to write the article, Remember and Do Not Forget. For most of you, if you know that I also write on Medium, I try to write. <laughs> and in that episode, also, and in that article, something that also inspired it was grace. You, you shouting out to me, now I'm about to shout out to you. Mm. When you knew, um, you know, I can't remember what me just called that day on Zoom. Do you remember what happened? 
I think I was doing a mock interview for you yes, for Google, yes, Abby. Yes. And then you saw that something was wrong with me or something. Whether I was just giving wrong vibes. And then yeah. you started talking to me, asking me what was wrong. And to be honest, I think I couldn't even place my finger on what was wrong. Because I had started the Google process since January. And this was just in March. Me thinking, when is this thing going to click? When am I going to hear from them? You know, I was just... I think I was just really scared that I had flopped my interview. So, um, and that day you had completed all of your interviews. Yes, I had. And I think I was just really scared that I had flopped the systems design interview. Anyway, Grace now told me about the scripture, Isaiah 62, 6 to 7. Do you remember it? Yeah. Remember? Yeah, like those yeah. who make the Lord remember. Like yeah. Those, remember, like, remember to remind the Lord. Exactly. Like, exactly. And you told me... For, Please check it out if you have the time. Exodus 6 to 7, something, um, take no rest and remind God of his promises. And you yeah. told me that it's not like God forgets, forgets, but he wants you to also remember so yes. that, you know, you keep holding on. Yeah. Like you keep trusting and you keep praying. Yeah. So that was, that was just something you told me casually. And I was like, wow, this is the, and that, that and that helped me remember because sometimes you hear, you know, some, some, a lot of us know that our futures are great. But yet, we still doubt. Yeah. I used to tell myself that I know I'm going to get a job. It's just how long am I going to wait? And in that waiting season, how long, you know, can I trust God during that waiting season for it to come to pass? So just as an encouragement to anyone waiting to, don't see it as if, like, I'm about to give up. My life is useless. No, 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 no. All these things will happen in due time. It's just what are you going to do with your waiting season? Yeah. So do you want to share, yeah, <laughs> yeah. share so the scripture? Isaiah chapter 62, 6 and 7 says, I've posted watchmen on your walls, mm-hmm. Jerusalem. So mm-hmm. Put on your name. Yeah. <laughs> they will never be silent day or night. Mm-hmm. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and mm-hmm. give him no rest till mm-hmm. he establishes Jerusalem. Put yeah. in your name. Yeah. It makes her the praise of the earth. Earth, exactly. And I feel like you were a watchman posted on my wall that day. Because I don't even think, usually I don't really tell people, oh, I'm sad, you know, because somehow, oh, I feel like I'm scared, I'm going to not get the job. Because somehow, too, like I said, I know that everything will be all right at the end of the day. He who watches over the sparrow, how much more me, you know? So I, I kept keeping it in. But I think that day, God used grace to talk to me that he's still here. Like, I shouldn't be worried. When, so I don't think I've even shared. So I've talked about everything up until 31st December. And then January comes, I'm still in Boston with my family. I had applied to Google again at the beginning of the year. So just to be frank, the only company I applied to in 2022 was Google. So I had a friend refer me for some, and one referral allows you to apply to three applications. I applied to operations manager. I didn't, some of these roles, I didn't even know. I would just see the job description. I'm like, oh, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I'm applying. I applied to YouTube as a content programmer for kids or something. I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. In, in less than three days, all the three applications, recruiters responded to me that they're sorry. They can't move forward in my application. And this was like 18 January. Then 24 January comes, I get an email from a recruiter at Google that, oh, she just found my resume. There's this new role, technical program manager for an entry role. Am I interested? You say, am I, me? Am I interested? <laughs> <laughs> so I immediately responded. And you know, that was even holiday period, but I was just checking my emails as usual. I didn't even know what I used to do on my computer when I knew that I was not applying for jobs. I was just... <laughs> God, I was just so serious at the beginning of the year. Maybe, and honestly, not like I was lazy or anything, but somehow, somehow at the back of my mind, I didn't know I would be fine. Yeah. But anyway, so that's, and that's how the process started. She was like, do you have some time to call? Of course, she sent me this form for early career recruiting. I filled it. By 7th of February, I had the first recruiter phone screen. She told me about the job, told me this job would be sponsored. You know, yeah, that, you know the usual 411. I remember that day, so preparing for that interview, I brought paper, pen. You should have seen me. I was like, wow, this is the time of my life. I'm starting, you know, everything. I tried to put all my dogs in a row. Yeah. And then we had the call. Then she scheduled the next. So now that's second stage, Abby. Yeah. So she scheduled the next call with a phone, a phone screen with another technical program manager. I think I would, sh- I would have to share this full story in an episode or on YouTube if I eventually get around to starting that. But I yes. did do that round. <laughs> and luckily for me, the person who spoke to me, she was, I can't even remember what unit in Google she's in, but her past experience was on working. She had worked on, um, what's the name of this oil and gas company? B, oh my God, I can't remember it now. But this popular company that had a blowout. <laughs> 
oil and gas is a is a big one bg or B, i can't remember it right now but anyway so we could share our experience like me when she asked me a lot of these questions i could share my experiences relating to oil and gas and she could understand me it was a very long process yeah. 45 minute call then and that was on vows day i remember when everybody was asking what are you doing for vows i'm like i'm and with my recruiter, I'm spending my vows day with my recruiter. Because <laughs> there was a lot of preparation too for that interview. Yes. And then I had the Super Day interview, the virtual online, on-site calls on the first and second of March or so. And also while doing this, I was also applying for a remote job. So I started to work for Money Me, a digital financial bank, you know, that helps immigrants thrive so you can exchange money and send home. Yeah. So I was doing that remotely. I was an associate product manager, community growth. I've not I'm yet to update my LinkedIn. Whatever, whatever. So this is March. I'm talking to Grace. Grace sees that I'm downcast because yeah. I had like four interviews in two days and these were hectic interviews. Like you think they're going to ask you, tell me about the time. Tell me about the time. Meanwhile, they are asking me questions like, um, if you started a project and you find out that the budget is 75% complete, yet the project is 25% complete, what will you do? Questions that make you dig the back of your brain to answer. Like, I feel like no preparation can prepare you for that, you know? <laughs> they would ask you, I'm, as a, um, I'm a five, imagine I'm a five-year-old, explain something to me. I was like, if, and in my preparation, I'd seen that that question could come up. So imagine if I wasn't ready for that, I would have gone to be teaching them how to teach and cook jello fries because i was like what can i like how in that moment how am i going how am i going to know what i'm supposed to to teach you as a five-year-old oh my god and like i said again information is power i talked to a lot of people who had gone through this process i watched thousands of youtube videos trying to prepare myself you know so that if anything happens and i look back i will know that I think I did my best. Like if I didn't get the job, then I was not supposed to get it. But I never left room for, you know, like you said, below excellence or, you know, I did my best to prepare. Hey. And that's, and I, although even with that, we know that success is not to the swift. I, how, how does the Bible say it? Battle is not to the strong. Yeah. The race is not the to the swift. Who, yeah. Hmm. Those hey. who win and those, who win the race are exactly. the fastest. Exactly. Like, I know all those things. That people who are rich in life is not, like, your success does not, effort doesn't always yield results. I'm very much aware of that. And yeah. that's why I needed to trust God throughout the whole process. Because yeah. a lot of these things too are subjective. Even with people who interview you, you know. But long story short, <laughs> April came. I remember I was telling God, April 5th. By April 5th, God, I want to, I want to have head back from there. Hey. And you know, after this stage, there's a stage called team matching in Google. So you have to keep matching with teams to find out if um, you're the right person for their job, for their team. I went through that with Google Cloud. You know, things, a lot of things were not working. And me that I wanted to go to the West Coast, they now said that oh, no, no, none of the managers were interested. No application, no positions were opening up for me on the West Coast. Then I opened it up to New York City. So eventually, I did get a team to match. Even when I got a team to match, they now came back to me to tell me that that team was a structure. <laughs> yes, and my village people. But God for myself. I don't even have village people. They can't, even though they gather. Though they gather. But anyway, long story short. But the Lord is on your side. <laughs> long story short, yes. I eventually got the job. I'll be joining Google as a program manager. Hey. God. On the privacy team for consumer devices and services, you know, yeah. um, devices, services, and security. And, you know, I don't even care. When I get there, I'll find yeah. out. <laughs> you have a job. Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm not doing. Okay, I started the role as a technical program manager, but along the line, and when I got to hiring committee, I think they approved me for program manager because they found out that I didn't have, you know, all the requisite technical skills, of course, yes. Um, I, I don't even know how to code, and all the, although they were not required for the job because it's an entry level job for master's students. But look at me now, you know. Now, I didn't want to think about how I got here anymore. I really don't care. Like, those days are over. (laughs) Although I would say that there were a few times I would be excited, you know. I'm like, and a song that, I mean, I think you should read the article for any of you that might be interested. That song by Maverick City, Keep Praying, every single line was for me. Like, I I am living proof of what holding on can do. And like, you used to tell me that, Tola, I can't believe you waited three months for one company and I never looked outside to try to apply any other place. I was just like, like, this girl is crazy. I was like, God brought this job my way. I didn't ask for it, so he better finish it. (laughs) Okay, no, no. He started the work. He will complete it. Please, I don't talk to God like that, I beg. But, you know, I remember the day in the toilet, I sat, I'm like, God, the devil has tried again. Every time I'm about to touch my blessing, something just happens. What do they mean by their restructuring? You know what it is for a team to say they have matched with you and they like you? 
like and they come back and say they're restructuring they're not sure when they will be taking on the team hmm. i even remember i had a friend who told me that she wouldn't thank god that they told me before i joined that if i joined i would have had to figure out how to look for a new team and all that and i'd have been talking to managers again so that i don't even know what the bullet got saved me from anyway um i remember i sat down one day in the bathroom and i was like god please i am weak like i know i'm giving up and sometimes once you give up in your mind it it affects like it begins to affect every other thing yeah. even my recruiter will be able to sense that i'm even giving up and she might not even want to try but every time i had checking calls with her i would still go up show my nice face you know i would be gracious be kind be polite even though i'm very sad you know yeah. i'm just waiting for her to give me another bad news again that oh i'm sorry to tell you that manager was not really impressed you know I was just always waiting for bunnies until one day came. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that day, she didn't even, the day she finally told me, she didn't even bother to talk about the weather. You know this one, the small talk. Before it is, the weather is good, the weather is nice. I'm like, auntie, please, can we get to the part where you tell me? <laughs> like, and then eventually on the day she told me I got the offer, that was the first thing she said to me. She's like, told me, this is the news we'll be waiting for. You got the offer. And then I started crying. At first I was like, Tolu, whatever happens today, just be okay. Because I had been telling God I wanted the job on my birthday. And I think that's something else I learned in this journey that I do not get to de- dictate when he gives me his blessing. Mm. I remember on my birthday too, I was so excited because I was like, I've been waiting for this email. I didn't get it. And then I even had some people wait one year on this process. Because as people know too, Google's hiring process is infamously very slow and long. It takes 8 to 12 weeks. But I eventually got the offer May 3rd, signed May 5th. (laughs) Yes, Grace was there that day. Yes. It was at the loose place. Place, yeah, when we heard. I remember that day I came upstairs and I told you and I said, I got the job, you know. That day was such a happy day. I called my mom, I called my dad. My dad was even somewhere at the phone shop. You know, Nigerian parents. He (laughs) called me. He was telling the people where he was to. My daughter just got a job. I'm like, Daddy, please, 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 Daddy, please, 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 can you calm down? Let's calm down. Oh God, I, I call and luckily all my sisters were on meet and break. My younger did sister. You not pray for it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was such a happy day. It was a yes. happy day, you know, that and I started to tell people, I don't think I've really put it out. I've not done my app list to announce yet. But I think you guys that are listening now might be the first or be the last, we don't know. But we're so excited to share and that's our story. This is that's how far God has brought us. And now when I keep I remember even that day, you know, I would sleep. I'm like, no, no, this thing is not real. Please let me go and check again. <laughs> that is the right email, it's for me, it's my full name. I'm like, well, what did they you know? And then I started saying things like some other tech companies were rescinding offers. Yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ, God, is the devil going to attack again? So much so many times I was giving power to the devil after God had completed a good work mm. he had started. There are so many times God will remind me that. Who are you? Who are you to decide your future? Who are you to say that I've started it and I will not complete it? Hey, you great mountain. Hey, God. And I mean, for a lot of you that might say we are speaking a lot of Christian news, we are sorry, but in our it's own world, God. as in, in our own world, we can't do it without God. And even if, yes, you can say take out the God factor, yes, if you're hard of you probably have gotten it. But it is very, ask people who have gone through this Google process, go and ask them. It's not easy it's to hard. go in and come out with your mind still intact. Like all the back and forth. You know, some people go through this and sometimes they don't even find a team, they have to close their application. There's a time my, my recruiter even told me, but I remember I didn't tell anybody. I said, I'm not going to share this bad with anybody that this woman says she, okay actually i did tell someone that she said she was going to close my application if we didn't find a team that was interested mm-hmm. hey i said see rough play this woman was close my application. what does she mean by this <laughs> for that day i know those days i'll just be quiet i'll be thinking and then i remember god's word i remember yeah. and, I, and i refuse to forget that he had already prepared a place for me mm-hmm. and i even told myself even if this doesn't still work out i went for this for, through this for a reason even yeah. though, like the three Hebrew boys said, that even though God does not deliver us from this fiery furnace, He's still we're God. Still trusting and I think once I got to that point, I think this was also a step of, you know, I, 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 I tell myself, I call myself Abraham because I believe I have the gift of faith, <laughs> just like Abraham. But this was, this was a, a step higher. I mean, God taught me that truly his time is the best, as cliche as it is. I remember I said that, God, I want this better gift of my job, this, that. But I'm even happy that it came when it came. You know, everything has just worked out. Like, look at us now, Grace. I can't believe it, honestly. I remember then I don't want to go out to all these gardens. I'm like, God, please, I don't want anybody to ask me what am I doing now. Don't ask me. Although I did have a remote job that was paying my bills. I was happy in that job. I was doing community growth for them. I was quite content, you know. Yeah. Any $1,000 a month, you know. 
<laughs> I was I was happy. Yeah. My parents were still paying my rent and I could still buy what I needed to buy, right? Yeah. I remember and <laughs> Grace, I know you would judge me that I'm very wasteful. I remember that even without my small salary, I still went to go and buy Lululemon leggings. I don't care. I'm like, please, I will enjoy enjoyment now. Na, enjoy I, can think, again, I, can, I, will, I can think about the future later. I don't care because I was like, if I keep worrying, I will not even live my life. Please. But anyway, look at us now. God has been faithful. That, ah, God, I can't, I can't Im- imagine. I mean, we need to, let's close off this episode. But, we'll wrap this yes, let's, let's, <laughs> let's wrap it up. But man, what a good God. So if you have what the chance, journey. yeah, do read the article. I also attached Grace's prayer for me in that call. She was really praying for me from the depth of my heart. I mean, I was there recording it. I was like, <laughs> it's like, I think that day, I didn't want anybody to tell me, to trust God because I, I really did feel I was in the trenches and you were really a watchman posted to my walls because I think what the devil was trying to do was just to attack my faith you know if for one minute I started doubting that this could be mine even forget that forget God just willpower sometimes if he attacks your willpower your perseverance your persistence and you begin to give up slowly, slowly. Mm. I feel like a lot of things begin to slip out of your hand. When yeah. you begin to think, oh, maybe I, maybe this is not for me. Yeah. The universe, let me join them. Mm-hmm. We'll collect it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I agree with you, but God forbid. But, you know, anyway, I'm, I'm happy that this is where we are now. Yeah. So He's faithful. I know. All. I know. All in yeah. all. So, I'm, Grace, <laughs> so there's also one question I really see. didn't want to ask you. Um... Would you like to marry a Nigerian man? <laughs> wow, where is this one coming from? See, don't you know what I have talked about? How did you go from 100 to zero? Honestly, whoever God sees that is the right one for me, who yeah. am I to say no? No. Whether they are. But I know, I know that's that what you want. <laughs> Even though we all think you're going to marry a white man, but it's okay. Oh my God. Every one of my friends think I'm going to get married to a white guy. Oh God. But yeah. You know, I love Nigerians. Yeah, so much. And we can't, we can't wait. Vibes. We can't wait. And Grace keeps telling me that I'm the one that will pack money at your wedding. I'm yes. like, oh, you will pack that day. Pack your back will be paying you. <laughs> My back eventually pays me. I mean, do, do we have massage? <laughs> <laughs> we have massage. Can't you afford it? <laughs> hmm. Oh, God. But it's all good. It's Thank all good. you, guys. Yeah. And what's one advice you have for people on oh. their job search as we wrap up? <laughs> okay. I have two things. Number one, put your faith in God because mm-hmm. he really knows where exactly he's placing you. Number mm-hmm. two, do not compare yourself because yeah. trust me, people around you are going to get jobs before you do. Yeah. <clears throat> so don't compare to them because their journey ain't your journey. Yes, girl. Preach it. And your life ain't the same. Hey. <laughs> you know, and don't compare yourself. If you see, if you see people getting dropped, please celebrate them. Yeah. Don't be, don't be there being mad and angry because yeah. you know, if God is blessing th- those around you, know yeah. that He's in the neighborhood. Yes, exactly. <laughs> hey, it works. And they say testimonies do replicate. You know, yeah. If you if you are starting to to be sad about those who are getting jobs around you, hmm. please check your heart. Yeah. So and um. Yeah, that's too bad. I'm yeah. so glad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Grace. <laughs> and for me, I think one advice I would say is um, keep doing everything you're doing. Like for me, I don't think I did much. You know, people would tell you to do heaven and earth. Like network. Hey, do this. I mean, do all of that. Do everything you should be doing for your career search, especially as an international student. student. Truth is, a lot of us can't afford to be picky. I can't afford to say, oh, I don't want this job and all that. But also, I, I did used to get a lot of that advice. Like, this is the beginning of your career. Take anything that comes your way. Mm. Then when you go up. But when I, I listened to it too. But when I went home, I told myself, no, I know what I want. And mm-hmm. I, I will go for that. Even though, to be honest, and I, when I wanted, what I wanted at the time was CNN. And I was really pursuing it. I was really pursuing media companies. I even landed an interview with the United Talent Agency. Those are hey. big agencies hey. that represent big talent. I was ready to go to Hollywood. You know, and my networking, my informational interviews took me, I met a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So go after what it is that you want. But yeah. eventually, at the, at the back of it, be ready to know that if that's not what God wants for you, be ready to drop it and move to where he wants you to be. Absolutely. All the time, I always used to say, God, you know I'm really big on wanting to stay in purpose. I really want to do what you have brought me here on earth to do. And I started this journey with um, requiring purpose-driven life, you know. So I'm very self-aware that I do not want to be doing what I'm not supposed to be doing here on earth, you know? Yeah. So I was always willing to also be led by God. But whatever it is you're doing now, I know that a lot of us who come here are always, we are, all of us strive for the best. 
keep doing it and where you can even do more know what you want go for it think highly of yourself like don't see yourself and imagine yourself doing the worst don't settle for less like i wish i could sing mm. this into every some people see me don't and be like okay we're gonna sing now <laughs> So I'm supposed to be like, she went to Canada. Went to... I know, yes, a lot of times my, my life might seem like a movie. And when you see some people's life, it's like, look at her, she went to this, she went to that. Oh no, me too, I'm still fig- trying to figure out this, the secret to my genius or the secret to how God is, you know, doing all these things in my life. But a lot of times too, I think God trusts that. He trusts me to trust him. And that is what I keep showing. I'm like, God, okay, this is where you want to take me. Okay, I'm going to believe you. Imagine if I started this Google process and I started doubting myself from the beginning that ha, this thing can never be for me. If I went in with that mindset all along, I would never have prepared. I would never have come correct, you know? So think highly of yourself. Like sometimes I didn't want to tell people I was recruiting for Google because I felt a lot of time people would think that, oh, maybe she doesn't deserve it. I remember someone even told me that, are you technical enough for that role? Hey, <laughs> no, but it's okay. And you know, God also, you know, that's why, that's why you guys should know. That's why I have <laughs> to ask Tolu, have you started telling people you got into Google? Because if you have started me, is me who's going to be announcing it. Because I want, I want all these people to see that we have a big God. God. Yes, girl. You know? Yes. It was. It, it, it took a lot of getting used to. And even when I got to hiring committee, those people could have kicked me off and be like, no, she's not technical. But God still made a way for me. Ha! Huh. God, I can't see it. I'm sorry. I really can't see it any other way. I, like, I don't even think I have the best grades. I've said it countless times how my grades dropped during my second semester. But I, I'm also happy to announce that I had the 3.9 in my last semester before I graduated. No, play, don't be happy. It's not 4.1. <laughs> Okay, be happy, be happy. I'm proud of myself because coming from the trenches to that, you know, it took a lot. But anyway, um, and I finally had my first A plus because here is the ghetto. To get an A plus is not easy. And it was only like seven on the dots. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm grateful. I'm, I'm really grateful. Just looking back now, I'm like, I guess everything has led me to this point. It's not and my mind. Exactly. Not my, and even, my grade. <laughs> and even for you listening, like you don't, have, yours might not be Fang or MBB or any of these other big companies. But just be, just be aware that, just be, just, I had what I said, just always be expecting that this is where I want to, um, just, no, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that always look out for where God wants you to be. And that's where you will thrive the most. Like I could be in CNN, which is still a reputable company and not be doing well and not be, and exactly, and not be anything there, just doing what I'm not meant to do. And even for this, I don't even know for sure. Cause nobody, I never used to say, I never really saw myself at Google, to be honest. I never really sat and thought I'm going to be in tech. I never even liked that name, Tech Bro, Texas, or whatever. But look at you now. No. <laughs> you know, but then when I look at the role, I'm like, this is definitely me planning projects, still being in operations, you know, and I'm not even in privacy. This is, this is something that I don't even know whether or not it's relevant. I really don't know, and I really don't care. All I know is I have a job, and when I get there, I will excel will again. Learn. I believe God has, tr- will tr- has trust me to always do right by him and to always, you know, show up for him and his kingdom. And I, and I will try. It's not like we know what we are just what we are really going so to be like doing you know there. <laughs> like you know when we'll ask and they'll be healing me. I'm like, okay, oh, me, I don't even know what I'm going to go and be doing there, but we'll find out. We will and, learn. I, and we'll do all the a day in your life. Oh no, I see all these YouTubers <laughs> in Google, a day in my life, what I spend in a day, three thousand dollars. Say hey, God of three thousand dollars, please give us so anyway. <laughs> Well, look at us now. Yeah, I wanted to say one, yeah. one last thing. I mm-hmm. know it has been a long time, this but is I remember a, yeah. you say, what, what advice can you give to, to people mm-hmm. who are applying for jobs? But mm-hmm. I also realize you passed on to people who may not even be applying to jobs. Yeah. <clears throat> so one advice I can give is, it's really something I wanted to say, know your surroundings. Yeah. Not everybody's going to be happy for you. Honestly, oh my god, that's that's, that is if, so if, if, true. If, if I'm just gonna be that open, is so true, Grace. Everybody, because Tolu knows, I had to surround myself with people who I know are mm-hmm. constantly going to say, Grace, you're almost done. Yeah, you got this. Yes, you know, negative energy. I'm telling you, just hmm. spot it. Tell the Lord to reveal those people when yes. it will bring you down because those are the people who will, when you need somebody to, to say, Yes, even if you don't feel like you did this interview well. Yeah something will come up. Exactly. Those are the people who tell you, hmm, you definitely, maybe, maybe you didn't practice enough. No, hey, maybe you're not good enough. They will not be affirming those things that make you weaker but, and weaker. But be, surround, Tolu knows this about me, surround mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. with people who will 
bring you to purpose. Yes. People who will encourage you. People yeah. who will hold your not, hand up not, like Aaron everyone, and Miriam. It's not Very important. That we told where we are, we are flying. It's not everyone that we we, we yeah. told that we are even, especially you know, <laughs> we are women. Yeah. Black. Exactly. African. Right. You know, everything that everybody already thinks you're not qualified. you're not qualified. Exactly. So that's why. Hmm. Should yeah, you're, you know, touching on this, you know, I have a list. Know your surroundings. Exactly. Yeah. I do have a note where I write random lessons I have learned in 2022. You know, just by my observations of my friends, one of them is beware of negative energy. You know, the, I know all this is a work thing to say, but what we're really trying to say in Christianity is like, beware of negative thoughts. My mom used to say that negative thoughts are like arrows. I know a lot of these things, this is never to be spiritual or arrows or demons, but these things are real. I don't they know if are. any of you have read the book Angels and Demons by Frank Peretti. These things are real. Sometimes I don't even pray for God to open my eyes. Let me see them. I don't want to see them, but I know they are real. And I believe the mind is more powerful than the brain as well. Whatever it is you conceive in your mind, if you keep telling yourself, oh, I can do this. Exactly. Do you know, even during my Google interview, they sent me, there's this image they send they also talked about visualize yourself in google so that it can also help you prepare better for the interview i used to watch youtube videos hey god of a day in the life of this of that you know just to visualize you know because you, if you can think it you can be it honestly yes. like and i kept trying to do that and like you said this be where the surroundings there are people i would tell and i know that i'm not telling the right person my mind will be telling me you don't need to share that with this person because yes. some people don't wish you well some people actually do not wish you well. And sometimes it's not intentional. It's just envy. No, somebody somebody told me that hmm. I got in my case because of luck. I looked at those the, people uh, was like... No, exactly. That's... People trying to demean your success. Yeah. Let's, even, let's even put God as... Okay, no. Not that we really mean to. <laughs> but some people will be trying to give explanation to your success. I'm like, how dare you? How dare you try to tell me that? Do you know that? what I went through? And, and that's why I like to even say all this, my, my grades are not good. So I will tell you that it's not by formula. Because if my grades were good, you say, oh, it's because my grades were good. Yeah. If I was this, you say, oh, because I'm this. Oh, yeah, now that I've gotten job. Come and tell me the reason why I got it, if not for God. Mm. <laughs> Please, and no. you're very right. People do have Please, negative. Not, not every, is. not everybody wishes you well, yeah, and that can definitely affect you. you. Because if you, if I imagine if I go and tell the wrong person, I think I flopped in my systems interview today. Imagine they were asking me that I should design a an X-ray system. Hey, and that's all. I was not like okay. Who has access to it? They didn't even tell me if it's doctors. I was not there asking, okay, um, can I assume that um, this X-ray system, radiologists all over? I didn't even remember what I said. God knows. <laughs> it was a lot of funny questions. They even asked, I remember they asked me, I didn't even know if I was supposed to be saying this, but like, they asked me, what's the advantage of having a wireless room? Like, in this room, there are no wires anywhere. It sounds like a very dumb question, right? But I guess it's to see, so I was like, okay, less clutter, nobody can trip, less hazard. You know, the most mundane questions. But imagine if I went to go and tell somebody, I think I flopped, and they affirm you more and more again. You begin you, to you think, like I'm, I'm not enough. I'm you know yeah. what? Maybe I should start applying for other jobs. And then the work, the work God is trying to do in my life. You know, I mean, these things, some people say, why do I need to pray for God to answer? Doesn't he already know what I want? But in this world we are, God has already given us choices. He, like, he has put it in our he hands. To see kind of. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you have to take the bull by the horn, basically. Honestly, beware of negative energy is a very valid, very valid. Yeah. Like, know who you share your testimony with. Truly, like they say, there's an African proverb, don't call people to eat until your food is ready. Like, it's done cooking. So don't come and tell people, food is ready when it's still on the fire. You know, let something not go and happen. Let it not go and pour your food down, you know? Yeah. And I had to learn that even though a lot of time I wanted to share with my friends, oh, I'm interviewing, pray for me, you know, just out of my own goodwill, not knowing that people don't wish me well. Yeah. But yeah. Be aware of those ones. Yeah. And also be the one who's positive. Yeah. Like, don't be the one who brings. <laughs> Maybe yeah. we're just, exactly. yeah, be the one who is positive. Exactly. So that you really encourage people and speak life. Yeah. Them. Like even when exactly like even when I hadn't had the job yet and yours was coming fast. Like for no one's never okay, maybe I was like, Ah oh God, we have done it for grace. Okay, do my own now. But not that I'll be thinking Ah, look at Grace, look at me, what's the difference? You yeah. start comparing. Because you're success. Are we not all, know my, my success. success. <laughs> are, we, like, are we not all God's children? Like, yes. in, in, in due time, we're all in different... Like, don't compare yourself with people in another season of their life, honestly. Mm -hmm. And that's why I never looked at people who were getting jobs before me and ever wondered when my own would come. I was sure it was coming. Yeah. It's just that I might have to wait longer. Yeah. Anyway, to bring this to a, a close, just... I'm going to ask you to sing oh. your chorus. Yes, girl. <laughs> you thought I forgot. <laughs> yes, you sing in Karanda. Yes, and you give a word to your what we call, randoms um, that might be listening. But yes. before that, what's something about you that's not on your LinkedIn? 
something <laughs> about I think it's the, my music. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, already giving that oh, away. Something on on link on link something about me that is not on LinkedIn. Ooh. <laughs> mm-hmm. You mean like something funny? Yeah. Okay, LinkedIn yeah. is not supposed to have like funny things. Anything at all. Okay, what's something people don't know about you? I used to watch WWE. <laughs> oh my god, you were really tall. I really used to know like more than That's wrestling, a wrestling games game, right? Of wrestlers, oh Randy god. Orton, Jack. So the Undertaker is real. Does yeah. it really go down like they say? Like, no, it's, to the it's a game. It's oh. a game. Sorry, spoiler alert. It's a game. I used to know Kane, Rey Mysterio. What the if, hell? If people, if people know who I'm talking yeah, about, they don't know. know. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I didn't even know that. I don't, girl, I don't even yeah. know that. Triple H. Oh, the name on a, I used to write down when I was bored and write oh. the names. First and last name. Of wrestlers. Of them. Just go down the list. Wow. That's, I didn't even know that about Stone, it. All of <laughs> That's interesting. I think for me, something I about me. Boy, really? I wow. Was. Wow. And I think something for me, um, that's not my LinkedIn. I think I've already said too that I write. <laughs> Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm a wannabe writer because I used to try when I was much younger. But during the lockdown, I picked it up again because I'm more, I'm most expressive when I write than when I talk or when I, whatever else people do. Yeah. Then I think I dance when I'm sad. <laughs> You dance? Yes, in the mirror. <laughs> How are we I don't know. This? I just play Afrobeat or anything. And I'm like, I think I want to groove it up today. And oh, something else. How are we learning? How, how am I learning? <laughs> and I think, one of <laughs> I think something else people might not know. Um, I, I, I went to catering school, but I dropped out, obviously. But for two months, I started at the catering school, trying to train to be a professional chef. So and that uh, makes sense. Because Tolu in the kitchen, she cannot disappoint. <laughs> Only when she puts a lot of pepe. pepe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yes, I, I did do that. So yeah, that's something about me. And like you said, I just want to buttress again what you said, that worry about the qualifications later. Like, yeah. worry about that later. Be nervous later. Later, later exactly. Interview. After the interview, like, still apply and just keep going. Okay, now, so time for the song. Um, um, so sing a chorus, tell us the meaning, um, and that's how we're going course. to wrap up so this episode. My last, <laughs> uh, my last song is called Dusuke. Last? Hey, no, God forbid. The, last, not, the, re- the most recent most, song. Most recent. <laughs> because of school and everything, it has yeah. been a year now. But yeah. I'm picking it up this year. Yeah. Hey, get ready. Hey, hey. 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 Uh, it's called Dusukehu Muka, which in English means pour your spirit on us. Mm. So it says Dusukehu Muka, Hindra Mateka, pretty much like change our history. Tukwambike yeah. Imbaraga, um, which means like clothe us with your strength. Duhenu Gusanawe. Which 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 means uh, make us be more like you. So I'm just mm. gonna sing the bridge. Um, yes, girl. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Fallen has killed me. I've lost my <laughs> voice. But no. um, it says, "Du suke humuka Hindu ramateka tukambi kimbara ga du heno gusana we du suke humuka Hindu ramateka." Kambi kimbara ka tu heno go sanawe. Oh, good. Santa to taki show was up. The Santa to taki. Yeah. Race on the beat. Hey. 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 Oh, and Grace, I know you said you oh, that was so nice. Thank you. <laughs> and cheers, cheers to this friendship of ours. No, cheers, yes. Yes, like cheers to you finally hosting your gospel concerts around the world hey. someday. Cheers to me being on Holly on TV hey. someday. Amen. Cheers to being rich. Yes! <laughs> Oh my god yes and this yeah. brings us to the end of this beautiful episode i, I want to apologize that's so long but i guess for some people they might it enjoy it yeah. yes i really enjoyed this time i don't think i've really sat down to reflect on this journey it's been a while and i'm sure i, I think we still have so much more to say yeah. but when you go to waltham boston please don't forget me i know and if you see me if you see me behaving anyhow on social media 
call me to order, you know, and yeah. I can't wait to keep supporting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this I can't believe our time I can us and then I shout out to all our friends, to our yeah. MEM classmates, India's yes. in our program, those guys really, they, they were our ride or die. Ride or die. <laughs> our Indians were right. Oh yes, yes. yes. All our Asian friends, our yes. Chinese friends, our black friends, our black squad, our white, all of them are Colombian European, friends. Yes, yeah, like, Latin American. Well, Grace, everywhere. we're done with school. We're we graduating. We're we all not done. Hey. We're we not graduating. <laughs> we are really graduating. We are. Yes, God has been faithful, God has been kind to us he has taken care of us honestly we came out of this fire untouched okay i mean maybe a little bit touched but now where are the scars oh hey even if we have scars they will tell the story Story. (laughs) oh lord yes wow i'm happy we made it without tears yes thank you so much for listening Please, please remember if we can do it, you can do it too. Think highly of yourself. Honestly, have a higher sense of purpose. Don't settle. Like, exactly. Believe that you have a purpose bigger than yourself. Honestly, trust in God. Hold on to his word. Remember and do not forget. Yes. Have Pray for friends like Grace and I in your life. <laughs> You know, surround yourself with positive energy, positive vibes. Be good to people. People will be good to you. I know a lot of people in our program been telling us that we're the kindest people they've ever met. We're yes. the nicest. I'm like, huh? This <laughs> woman... <laughs> Do they really know what they're saying? I have some doubts, but it's all right. <laughs> I'm nice. I'm nice. Please, it's not nice. easy. Yeah. God has brought me from a, a, a far place. But anyway, God knows those days. <laughs> Where I was very, had a bad Jesus. attitude. Thank yes. You, Lord. Yes, and do you have any last words before we go? Oh, God loves you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, God does love you. He does. And this is the end. So, Grace, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on my Instagram by Gracious Grace, on YouTube, Gracious Grace, on LinkedIn for professional connection. <laughs> Please connect with me on my with my all of my names, Grace yeah. Imanadio. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, and reach out to her for interviews. She'll be helping people on the streets get into my kids. How many calls now have you had with all these people <laughs> trying to get in? And for me, I used to tell people that, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i saying this with all lightheartedness. Like, people will be like, oh, if you need a referral, sure, reach out to me. I used to tell people, everybody's like, oh, I know, I know that. I know that you can't really get everyone a referral. You know, you have to be sure who you're referring. But if indeed I am sure of you, just get the job so I can get the money. <laughs> Law. <laughs> but I just say that to say that. Just be encouraged. Of course, not everyone can refer you for every role or whatever. You don't even need a referral to really get in. Because like I said, a recruiter reached out to me. Yeah, yeah Grace didn't have a referral to. Yeah. Uh, it was later that they asked me, oh, we see that you know these two people at the company. Who would you like to attach as your referral? And I used the, I, I gave I gave them the name of the most recent person. So just like I said, trust in your purpose, trust in your journey. Yes. And um, yeah, we'll see you at the top, guys. Yes. So, peace. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>